My name's Clark, and I'm the editor who cuts out scenes from Hollywood movies for the China releases. Clip that out. You know, whether that be an LGBTQ kiss, something a little too diverse. They would not want that. Anything encouraging protesting or overtly sexual. And once I'm able to isolate those scenes, I put them in a bin right here. Gay scenes. And then I'm able to use those exact sections of the films to create little promos for social media, celebrating the communities we've just extracted from the China releases. For example, I just removed all of the gay kiss scenes from Bohemian Rhapsody. That was a big no-go for China. Back in for the China release. And the Star Wars lesbian kiss scene, of course. And I was able to use both of those scenes for my Love is Love compilation for the studio's Pride Month social. Yeah, I work with all the big studios, Disney, Paramount. If you've ever watched a progressive scene in a movie, just know that I'm the person who removed it for audiences in China. I'm sort of like a utility player for some of these studios. Look on the topic of Star Wars, I was doing the graphics recently. See, I had two different posters here. So what I did was I was able to isolate the black actor in the American version, we're able to make John substantially smaller here. And then I was also able to take that isolated photo for a We Celebrate Diversity social media post that we're working on here in America. 007 Skyfall, I got rid of some references to prostitution. We're in talks to use some of those select clips as part of our Sex Work is Real Work campaign. I like to think of myself as a general fixer. Just recently I edited out the Tiananmen Square footage from Activision's Black Ops Cold War trailer. See right here we had Know Your History or Be Deemed to Repeat. It. We're doomed to just get rid of that altogether. I'm gonna take that and use it for uh, we support protests domestically. Post. You know, sometimes me and the studio heads will joke around that on the editing floor it's no homo and China's homo. Or diversity when not overseas. It's a very complicated puzzle. I mean, recently America has made huge moves to support LGBTQ and diversity initiatives at home. But it goes without saying that progress can't come at the expense of these studios' profits, so we have to tread a fine line. You know, sometimes we're just tampering with something small, like changing the back Patch and Top Gun so no one thinks Taiwan's a democracy. Popping out a few kiss scenes in Mulan, or getting rid of a couple uncomfortable scenes in Django Unchained. This scene was a big no in China. And sometimes it's something massive, like changing every single Chinese flag to a North Korean flag in Red Dawn. That was my handiwork right there. In industries outside of Hollywood, this game could be a little simpler. You know, Google CEO, for example, was able to vocalize his support for protests domestically while removing any protest-related apps from the App Store in China. And Nike can sort of slide under the radar with the Kaepernick thing here and that you go to jail for protesting over there. They remove a few jerseys and it goes relatively undetected. But in the movie business, it's a more difficult puzzle to solve. The actors in these films have been recently very vocal of their participation in the movement. So it's very important to those actors that we still appear to be supporting those movements here even though they're being wiped from the films entirely abroad, thus preserving their public image domestically. Pirates of the Caribbean, we cut a lot of stuff out. Protest for thee, but not for Chinese.